News. Well, here now is Monica Crowley, former U.S. Department of the Treasury Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs. Monica, thanks for being here. Hi, Jerry. So Janet Yellen and uh, Democrats are accusing Republicans uh, by refusing to raise the debt limit of risking a default on the on the debt. Uh, Republicans Mitch McConnell seems to be standing firm. How does this end, do you think? Well, it's anybody's guess, Jerry, because it's all wrapped up into the larger fiscal and monetary picture. But the Democrats have been playing a game of chicken here, anticipating that the Republicans would do traditionally what both sides have done, which is join together in a bipartisan way to raise the debt ceiling and make sure that the full faith and credit of the United States is preserved and that the United States does not go into default. But in this particular case, the Democrats are on a mission this year, Jerry, to spend about $10 trillion. They want to raise uh, taxes by trillions of dollars more and explode the debt, all in most cases without a single Republican vote. So the Republicans here are being very smart in forcing the Democrats to walk the plank on the debt ceiling themselves. It's been a very, uh, very interesting political game that the Republicans have played and largely to their benefit. They do not control the government. The Democrats have a unified government. Government. So if they want to go down this massive spending road that is going to implode the economy in all sorts of ways, then the Republicans are saying, have at it, knock yourselves out, but you're going to have to do it without us. Let's look at that spending standoff that's also going on within the Democratic Party right now. So Nancy Pelosi has already delayed the vote that was promised on the bipartisan infrastructure bill that's already, uh, that's already passed the Senate. Um, uh, she's delayed that vote, saying it will now happen on Thursday, but she doesn't seem to be able to get her, the party's left wing on board for that, who say they won't vote for it unless there's a, a approval of the massive $3.5 trillion reconciliation plan. Who backs down here, Monica? Do you think in the end the, the progressives are going to get their way and they're going to get that three and a half trillion? Well, it's another game of chicken. And Speaker Pelosi is very famous, Jerry, for not bringing a bill to the floor for a vote unless she knows that it can pass. So she's already delayed this vote once. It was supposed to happen on Monday. She's now put it on Thursday. The House progressives have indicated over and over again that they will torpedo this bill unless they have an assurance that the $5 trillion, it's not $3.5 trillion, it's more like north of $5 trillion, uh, so-called reconciliation bill, which is really a fundamental transformation of the nation bill to a more socialist kind of model, unless that is being brought to a vote. So the, the progressives, if they can rally themselves, she could be short about 12 votes for this uh, bill on Thursday. But that also hinges on how many Republicans might go down the road of voting for this as well. Never underestimate Nancy Pelosi. She's been speaker several times. She's very effective at whipping her caucus and delivering on this. But yeah. also don't underestimate the progressives because that's where all of the energy and intensity and activism are in the Democratic Party. They do hold a lot of strings. So it's going to be a very interesting 48 hours. And Monica, just very quickly, you may have heard Edward Lawrence there referring to uh, Jay Powell, Fed Chair uh, testimony um, uh, about the uh, threat of inflation. And this, the Fed has been downplaying the threat of inflation. Now it looks as though, according to Fed officials, that inflation is higher and going to last longer uh, than they had initially thought. And now we're building up this enormous deficit. None of it looks good in terms of controlling inflation, does it right now? No, Jerry, and some of us were uh, saying now for months, including me and you, that this inflation looks far more persistent than what Chair Powell and the Fed and others were saying. This is not transitory. It does look like it's entrenching, and it has a lot of factors, including supply line uh, disruptions and the massive amounts of, of money, trillions of dollars pumped down into the system, specifically over the last 18 months or so. And we do know from the late 70s and early early 80s that when inflation gets entrenched, it is a very difficult and painful process to dislodge the economy from that. So if the Democrats want to go down this road and spend five plus trillion dollars more, well, the inflation that you're seeing right now will look like child's play. Thank you, Monica.